Hi, this is James Lee. Welcome to the module Standard Input, Output, and Pipes. Again, if you have any questions, be sure to use that question and comment box. So let's go. So in this module, we'll talk about standard input, standard output, and standard error. Standard input is a way in which our commands can receive input, typically from the keyboard. You type it in. Standard output and standard error both are uh, the location of output text, typically the terminal. We can redirect standard input and output, so we'll talk about this, the steps necessary to redirect standard in and redirect standard out. We'll also redirect standard error. And you know what? We can redirect both standard input and standard error at the same time, so we'll demonstrate how that's done. All right, standard input, output, and error. So Linux attaches to every process these three file streams. A file stream is just a, either a way to get information or a place to send information. The three streams that are attached are standard input, again, typically the keyboard, standard output, typically output to the terminal, and then standard error. This is where error messages go, and typically that usually goes to the terminal as well. So these three st uh, streams, standard in, standard out, and standard error, can be manipulated in the shell, and that's what we're going to demonstrate now. So standard input in Linux comes from the keyboard. And a lot of commands will read from standard input if you do not provide a file name. Perfect example, let's look at WC. WC stands for word count, and if I give it a file name, like largefile.txt, and hit, hit enter, it counts the number of lines, in this case 693, words, and characters in the file. But what happens if I type WC with no file name? I hit enter. Now it looks like it's sitting there kind of uh, hung up, not doing anything, but what it's actually doing is it's waiting for standard input. It's waiting for standard input. So let's type some standard input. This is some standard input that is entered into WC. And it's reading standard in, and it'll read standard in until end of file. So the question is, what's the end of file? End of file is control D. So the control D is held by the control. Uh, hold down the control character, type D. So I hit control D and notice it counts five words, excuse me, five lines, 15 words, 75 characters. So standard, so many commands work like this, meaning if you provide a file name, then it operates on the file name. If you provide no file name, it operates on standard input. So that's the standard input. Now there's also commands that operate and print to standard out. An example, ls. ls prints to standard out. Uh, who am I prints to standard out. Date prints to standard out. So many commands print to standard output. So again, in Linux, we have standard input. That's typically the keyboard. Standard output. That's typically sent to the shell terminal. And then there's standard error. Standard error is printed when there's some sort of error, like let's say I mistype ls. Oops, that's going to be an error there. That's going to the terminal. So if I do an ls of bin spelled like that, oops, another error. And here's another error that would happen, and that is if I try to read a file for which I have no permissions. So each of those are three different errors, and those errors are sent to standard output. I should say standard error output, which is displayed on the terminal. Now what we can do is we can capture, which is known as redirect, standard output and standard error output. So here's how I would redirect standard out. I would say execute the date command. Now remember, normally it's sent to standard out. So here I'll say date and then write the right angle bracket, the greater than symbol, and then a file name. Let's say command.out. So notice now the date command does not generate any output that's printed to the terminal. Instead, the output goes into that file. So if I now command the cat out command dot out, I see the content of the file. 
So using the single greater than, like we just saw, will overwrite the file. So I'll run this one again. So I'll do a date greater than command dot out. Cat it out again, and we see that the time has changed slightly because I, I ran one at 1443 and the other at 1444. Now what I can do instead of overwriting is append, and that's the double greater than. So if I do a date double greater than command dot out, and then cat command dot out, we see the next date in there, and I'll do, uh, let's say, who am I? Write that in append mode to command dot out. Cat it out now, and we see the two dates and my username. So the single greater than redirects standard out in write mode, the double greater than in append mode. So I can redirect standard out. So now the question is, can I redirect standard error output? And the answer is yes. That's by doing two greater than. Now remember that LSS is generally going to <clears throat> produce an error, but here I'm going to do LSS two greater error dot out, and that's going to take the standard error output, cat it into that file, or I should say redirect it into that file. <clears throat> And like with single greater than uh, for standard out, double greater than for, uh, and I should say, just like double greater than for standard out, double greater than for standard error output will do it in append mode. So if I do an ls slash bin with two ends, do two double greater to error dot out, we can see it appended the result. So single greater than overwrites, double greater than appends. Now oftentimes we'll want to run a command that generate that might generate a lot of standard error output that we just uh, want to ignore. So there's a little trick in Linux to do that and that's send the standard error into what we call the dev null bit bucket if you will. So I'll write this to dev null and then cat out dev null and you see that it has no content. So devnull is a special file, if you will, that whatever is written to it is essentially thrown away. So I'll do an ls of slash bin with two ends, redirect that into devnull, cat out devnull again, and you'll see it's empty. So then the question comes in, can I redirect both standard error and standard out? So let's look at this command. <clears throat> we do an ls of slash user local, which generates a little bit of content. ls of slash bin with two ends generates some standard error. So now what I can do is I can redirect both standard out and standard error into a file. So let's see how one might do that. So I can do an ls of user local, and slash bin with two ends into command dot out. Now if I do that, only standard out goes to the file. Standard error is still printed to the terminal. So if I, if I cat command dot out, we'll see standard error, standard output is in there, but not standard error output. <clears throat> so how would I redirect both? By adding two greater than ampersand one. That's like saying make two, which is the standard error, go wherever standard output goes. And now we'll see that command.out contains both the standard error output and the standard output. And finally we have this concept of a pipe. So what we can do is we can let's say cat out a file. So if I cat large text, large file dot text, that goes to standard output. We can see its content. <clears throat> and what I can do is I can take the standard out of the large file dot text, pipe it into with the vertical bar, the standard in of WC. So what that will do is it'll take the standard out of large file dot text, feed it into WC standard in. And we know WC is going to read from standard in because there's no file name following WC. So now that basically will take this, the standard out of large file dot text and count the number of characters. Okay, it's time for lab. This takes about 25 to 40 minutes, depending on your pace. First, create the file lab.out. 
and have that file contain the long listing of the slash bin directory. Step two is take lab.out and append to it the current date time. So make sure it gets appended to the file, it doesn't overwrite the file. Step three, display the file uh, wall quote dot text using the cat command. Pipe the standard out of that command into the sort program. Then do a unique sort, hit a man space sort to find out how to do a unique sort. Then pipe the output of that into the WC command to count the number of characters only. How do you count the number of characters only? Check out man WC and it'll tell you how. Finally, take the output of that and append it to lab.out. Step four, attempt to display the file Etsy's shadow as a non-root user. Append the standard error output to lab.out. Then list the long listing of the slash bin directory and pipe it into more. And use cut to display only the file permissions of the long directory listing for that current directory. Take the output of cut and do a unique sort, then count the different permissions found in this directory. Step 7, issue the following commands as a non-root user, and for each command, determine standard input, output, and error. Step 8, issue the same commands again, redirecting standard out to the file slash temp slash output, and standard error to slash temp slash error. And finally, step 9, count the number of hidden files in your current directory. So standard output of one utility can be delivered to the standard input of another through what's called a pipe. So let's say I start by doing cat of large file dot text. That's going to cat this file to standard output. But what I can do is I can take that standard output and deliver it through a pipe, that's the vertical bar, to a program that reads from standard in. And WC is set up here to read from standard in because there's no command line argument. So this will take the output of catting the large file dot text, which is all of its content, pipe, it, pipe that standard out to the standard in of WC and let WC read from standard in, do its work, and the result is the number of lines, words, and characters of the standard output. All right, if you have any questions, please sure to use that comment and question box. And thanks for joining us for this module.